Good morning, and I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to the service of worship at Morrifield Community Uniting Church on the Good Friday, 10th of April, 2020. This morning, our service will be in a different format. With the help of God, I am confident we will be able to worship together, although we are at different places. Thank God for his provision and guidance at this unprecedented time. We will be looking at different reflections on the cross. Please be safe. Rejoice in the Lord always. His love endures forever. Before we would continue to our call to worship, I would like to wish Pam Barron a very happy blessed birthday. And what a day to celebrate your birthday when our Lord paid the ransom for our sins. Also, a happy birthday to those that are having their birthday this week. May God continue to bless you and in the years to come. Let us join together in our call to worship. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. We have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. We have one who, is, who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. Let us express our thanksgiving through prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, in this time of uncertainty and fear, we turn to you, Lord, to acknowledge how much you gave up for us. You knew this time was coming, and you paid for our sins, for not believing in you, for not putting our faith and trust in your words. You walked alone. Your friends deserted you and even denied they knew you. You remained silent as you were falsely accused. You went before us experiencing all pain, grief and ultimately death. We can't say that you don't understand us because you suffered the same fleshly desires, cravings and pain that we do. You provide for our every need. You provide for our interest and pleasure. You provide words of wisdom, knowledge, comfort and direction for living our lives through your words recorded in your book and inspired by the, your Holy Spirit. You open our lives to new truths each time we read your words. Thanking you for all that you have done for us, acknowledging all that you have done for us, past, present and future, never seems to be enough. Help us, Lord, to put this thankfulness into practice through our words and our deeds. Lord, for all you've done, thank you. Amen. While Jesus was in Bethany in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Truly, I tell you, Wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So they counted out for him thirty pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. 
My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish and my years by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction and my bones grow weak. Because of all my enemies, I am the utter contempt of my neighbours and an object of dread to my closest friends. Those who see me on the street flee from me. I am forgotten as though I were dead. I have become like broken pottery, for I hear many whisperings, terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. But I trust in you, Lord. I say, you are my God. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James and John along with him and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible the hour might pass from him. Abba Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went again and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands, and in three days we'll build another not made with hands. Yet even then, their testimony did not agree. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A, name, a man named Barbarus was in the prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder. Crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry, dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to act, attract us to him, 
nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he cannot save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him, for he said, I am the son of God. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. This is the night, the awful night, when the disciple who dipped in the dish betrayed him. This is the night that he prayed in the garden all alone, asking that God would spare him, yet that God's will would be done. The crowds mocked him, no longer calling him king. In the morning, he stood before Pilate, who pronounced he should be crucified. Along the way to a hill called the Skull, Simon of Cyrene carried his cross. The woman wept and cried out for him, but he asked the daughters of Jerusalem to weep not for him, but for the world. The crowd cheered and shouted, Crucify him! At the cross, the soldiers placed a purple robe upon him, and they placed a crown of thorns on his head. They spat upon him. He thirsted, and they offered him wine mixed with gold. Then they nailed him to the cross, and he died. He died. He died. Let's sing... Lord of the dance. I danced in the morning when the world was begun, and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun. I danced in the morning when the world was begun, and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun. 
in the sun and I came down from heaven and I danced on earth at Bethlehem I had my birth dance there wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance said he and I'll lead you all wherever you may be and I'll lead you all in the dance said he I danced on a Friday when the sky kept turned black It's hard to dance with the devil on your back They buried my body and they thought I'd gone But I am the dance and I still go on Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. Let us pray. Lord, help us to repent our transgressions and empty ourselves of unloving thoughts and deed. You were betrayed. You had your last dinner with your close friends, and Peter said he would die for you. And Judas Iscariot slipped out to meet the Pharisees and collect his 30 pieces of silver. Then you took the disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray with you and for you. You were headed into the greatest struggle in all of history. Judas kissed you. Oh, the nerve of him. Then the soldiers took you away for an illegal trial, built on lies and false accusations, while John watched and Peter cursed out the servants for suggesting that he knew you. Cleanse and heal us, that we may be as one, that your love, that your love may fill us with peace. An amazing, encouraging story is in Genesis. A famine hit, hit the land, but Isaac decided to sow a seed in the midst of famine. Guess what happened? In the same year, he received a hundredfold return. People thought Isaac was crazy for sowing in a time of famine, when others were fearful. Isaac was full of faith and he saw a harvest. Lord, we are people of faith. Don't make us operate according to what we see. Economy is not our source. God, you are our source. You are our protection, provision and peace. In challenging times, Call us to sow seeds and trust you for the harvest. In times of despair, may we find hope in the cross and Jesus' unending love. And we ask all these in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have taught us when we pray that we would say, Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. How deep the Father's love for us that he gave his only son. Let's sing. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he should give only son to make a wretch his treasure a great the pain of searing loss the father turns his
his face away as wounds which mother chosen one bring many sons to glory behold the man upon the cross my sin upon his shoulders ashamed i hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers it was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished his dying breath has brought me life i know that it is finished i will not boast in anything no gifts no power no wisdom but i will boast in jesus christ his death and resurrection why should i gain from his reward i cannot give an answer but this i know with all my heart his wounds have paid my ransom And the promise that we are given, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, for I will come again. Amen.